exciting new theater restaurant right at Sunset and Vine in Hollywood. Only six months ago, I left Paris, a showman with a big idea, not a franc to back it. Back home, I met a jolly little millionaire who looks and acts, well, kind of like Santa Claus. He went for my big idea. My name is Dan Bradley, and here it is, the Moulin Rouge. It's empty now, but in an hour or so, it'll come aglow, all the magic of an opening night. One last rehearsal on the mood number, girls. On stage, everybody. It's time to rehearse the mood number just one more time. And after that, the gambler's coin will be spinning. Heads or tails. Conceal it. I really can feel it tonight. I want you to hold me tight. Who knows if it's wrong? All right. I feel so romantic. Driving me frantic mm, tonight. You know we had a date and yet I'm here all alone. You know I'm gone away, but hardly why don't you phone? I'm in a mood. Honey, here comes Mr. Moneybags in person. Oh, hello, Mr. Gaylord. How'd you like up a great, oh, huh? Delightful, my boy, delightful. Oh, did that take me back to the lush old days in Montmartre? <laughs> you uh, spent a lot of time in Europe, didn't you, sir? Well, mostly Paris, my boy. And you know, I consider the show that we're giving tonight as my small tribute to that lovely city. Oh, I, I can't thank Mr. Bradley enough for allowing me to finance it for him. Dan Bradley's lucky. There ain't many backers like you. You're really doing this in style. If anything, it's too expensive. My dear boy, expense is never a problem. Quality is the watchword. Quality and splendor. And I like to think of splendor as synonymous with the name of Alfred Gaylord. Yes, sir. Harry! Harry! Yes, Margaret? Tell Dan Bradley I want to see him at once. Margaret's on a war path again. Yeah, well, where is Mr. Bradley? Yeah, last minute details, I guess. Uh, curtain time is 8.30, you know. Yeah. I'll see the lady. Yes, sir. Come in. <laughs> oh, Mr. Gaylord, I'm so sorry. I thought it was that darling producer of mine. Did I hurt you? Oh, my dear, of course not. As a matter of fact, I, I admire temperament in young ladies. 
It reminds me of the Countess Dubois in Paris. The Countess Dubois? Yes. She used to eat wine glasses when she was angry. <laughs> now, what's the trouble, my dear? Well, it's Dan. You see, he talked me into going into this production. Oh, and now... with good reason. You're a very important star. You're our star. Well, then why doesn't he treat me like one? Why doesn't he dress me? Nobody dresses me. They don't? Well, I'd be very happy to. I mean, the... the... Oh, oh, Mr. Yes. Gaylord, and... Mr. Bradley sent me down to see you about this bill. Sir, you have interrupted. Oops, sorry. Well, your apologies accepted. I'll see you in a moment. Now, my dear, about your costume, what seems to be the trouble? These rabbit skins. Where did Dan Bradley pick these up? In a rummage sale? I agree with you, my dear. You know, that's the one fault I find with Mr. Bradley, his inability to spend money. But now, don't you worry. I shall comb this city and find... Or better still, I'll phone to Paris, have them fly something over for you. But you shall have the best. Oh, you wonderful. Thank you. <laughs> Now, what do you want? Uh, Mr. Bradley told me to see you about a check. A check? Uh, yes, uh, on account of uh, the flowers I supplied for the show. Uh, Mr. Gaylord, sir. You supplied these whatever they are? I distinctly told Mr. Bradley to bring mink. Real mink. Haven't you got any? Uh, yes, sir, but I... Well, then bring it over immediately. Now, what is that thing? Oh, it's nothing, sir. Nothing. Uh, just, just the bill. Well, give it to me. I'll handle it immediately. Give me a pen. Yes, sir. There you are. An acknowledgement of the receipt of goods and my signature. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Gaylord. Thank you. And, and I'm sorry I interrupted you, but I shall have the mink over here right away. You see how foolish it is to get angry, Monday? Oh, you're so cute. Only you were a few years younger. Well, I'm not so terribly... Uh, I mean, <laughs> say love to you. Would you mind doing me a favor and tell Danny that I want to see him? Well, of course, my dear. Danny. What's Danny now? You are a young lady of many moods. Do you mean to say that uh, you and Danny... Uh... Definitely. L'amour? But definitely, for sure. L'amour. Oh, l'amour. I shall have Mr. Dan Bradley over here immediately, no matter how busy he is. Oh, Danny, are you sure you know what you're doing? But definitely. But definitely? For sure. You know something, Ronnie? You're the first scenic designer I ever saw that I wanted to kiss. Yeah, but lady scenic designers aren't too easy to find. <laughs> Let me go, Danny. i got to finish my hotel. Uh -huh. Show opens tonight. I haven't got much time. For what? To ask you to marry me? Oh, fine time to ask me. Look, I, I know this isn't the time or the place, and, and it's not much of a proposal, but I love you, Ruth. Oh, Danny, I know you do. Oh, well, I'll think about it. Well, think about it. I'll give you just until you finish your Eiffel Tower. Mm, Danny, this is a real scary thing you're suggesting. What do we live on? You haven't got a quarter. Yeah, but I got a beautiful backer named Kayla. And what about your beautiful star, Margaret? Margaret? She looks at you like it was mating time on the backyard fence. Margaret doesn't mean anything to me. Mm, but you mean a lot to Margaret. After all, Danny, she is the star of the show. What's she got to do with us? Mm, if Margaret ever took it into her vocalizing head to walk out on the show. Oh, Danny, don't you see we've got to wait? <laughs> I want to tell Margaret about it. Danny, don't be a fool. I can't help it. Thank you, Ellen. Oh, uh, yes, Ruth. I, I think it's a very good idea about the yeah, car. I would... Oh, hello. <laughs> well, it's, it's a wise man who checks on every little detail. But you look remarkably calm for a man who's going to open his show tonight. My show? Sure money, Mr. Gaylord. Oh, no, no. I'm very happy with the whole thing. You know, this is a fine idea of his. Bringing a breath of the continent... A, a, a theater and a restaurant where a man can have a good meal and see a continental review? Oh, I tell you, after tonight, we'll open places in other spots. New York, Las Vegas. Good. Oh, huh? Wonderful. Huh? Good. Oh, by the way, I, I just came from Miss Walton. Margaret. Oh? Yes, well, she needs a little cheering up, Daniel, and I think you should go and see her. Because we don't want anything to happen to our star on opening night, do we? No, I'll, uh, <clears throat> I'll attend to it right away. <laughs> That's the boy. 
Oh, what, what a remarkable age we live in. A beautiful young lady like you designing scenery. Well, if you're living. Uh, oh, well, I think your murals are perfectly charming. They, they, they're just a breadth of fronts. Oh, merci beaucoup, monsieur. <laughs> yeah, my first idea was to bring Dali or Picasso over to do them, you know. But Daniel would hear nothing of it. That boy will not spend my money. But in this case, I'm very glad he didn't. Because I think that you have captured just the... the really, I think you have. Well, thank you. Come in. Hiya. Where have you been? Maggie, this is no time to get upset. It's opening night. I don't care about that. Listen, I've done everything but throw myself at you, and now I'm even doing that. Well, you know how it is. I mean, there's a lot of responsibility. Oh, say that like for the this. birds. Listen, when you talked me into going into this show, you promised me your personal attention. Or maybe I didn't read the small print. Ah, oh, come on, Margaret. It's opening night, honey. Danny, there's something come over you. What is it? Well, to tell you the truth, Margaret... You Danny, see... Danny, before you go any further, I want you to know one thing. Now, I'm a good scout about anything but another woman. If I thought that there was anybody else... I'd leave you and the show flatter than yesterday's potato pancakes. Yeah, I bet you would. Okay, Danny, what did you want to say? Miss Walton, this is Harry. You asked me to squeeze in some time for you to rehearse that number again. I'll be ready for you in two minutes. I'm waiting, Danny. Well, Margaret, I... I just came up to, to wish you good luck and tell you I hope everything goes good. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I gotta run now. See you later. Upstairs. Oh, he's busy around here somewhere, probably. Why? You're very close to him, aren't you, Chuckles? The name is Chuck. Oh, last night you said you liked me to call you Chuckles. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, that was last night. You want something. Now, what is it? Well, nothing, really. I just think you're cute. The cuter you think I am, the more I know you want something. Now, what is it? Well, I was wondering if you'd do me a favor. Oh, no. I already did you one when I got you the job here as Cigarette Girl. Your sister nearly blew herself up a gale. Oh, my sister still thinks I'm in pigtail. She doesn't see me the way others do. The way you do. Kind of makes me glad I'm not your sister. Look, I want Mr. Bradley to give me an audition on Margaret's songs. Your sister's songs? Man, she'll take this place apart. Oh, she's just jealous because I can sing as good as she can. The show has to have an understudy for her. Please ask Mr. Bradley, Chuck. Please. Well, okay. Mm, thanks, Chuck. Oh, uh, call me Chuckles. Mm, you're dreamy. You know it. Parker, ah, it's been a long time. Dan, it's wonderful to see you. Nice to see you, Frank. Well, I want to tell you, boy, from what I've already seen, I'd say you got a hit on your hands. Well, I sure hope so. This club's the biggest thing I ever tackled. I can't tell you how much I appreciate you flying out here from New York to give me a hand. I need that voice of yours. Well, I'm happy to be here. You know, I work for a fellow that likes to help his friends, too. You know what he said? Go out there and help that pal of yours. Well, bless him, Frank. Bless <laughs> hey, him. Hey, Chucko, meet Frank Parker, Chuck Russell. Well, the voice in the shadow box. Hi, Frank. <laughs> Hiya, Chuck. Dan told me you're going to come out here and help us out. Sure swell of you. Well, I'm here and I'm happy. Say, by the way, that that other number is called, uh, the lady's name is Paris. Oh. And Harry and the girls are waiting down there to give it a run through. Well, let's not keep Harry waiting. Oh, Pardon right. me. <laughs> I got a good feeling about this show. After tonight, we ought to be able to live it up. Yeah, with a backer like Gaylord, we ought to be fixed for life. It's been tough living out of the filing cabinet, but uh, we couldn't let Gaylord know how broke we were. Yeah, real broke. You know I can stand on a dime and tell you whether it's heads or tails? 
Well, Gaylord wouldn't understand anybody being broke. It's uh, de classe in his book. Yeah, well, he's all right in our book. Funny how all this happened. You and me living it up big in Paris after the war and then having it pay off back here in the States. Yeah. Out of the clear blue, an angel, a beautiful angel who happened to fall in love with Paris 40 years ago. Yeah. Bless his little halo. <laughs> uh, I think I'll go out on the balcony and uh, case the action. Yeah, I'll put the uh, kitchen back in a dead letter file, Danny. Fusion and ulcers, everything about it. What I want is a nice ranch house someplace with a, a big kitchen and a deep freeze. I think we can arrange that. Yeah, but even a little ranch house costs money. And if anything should happen to make this show flop, Dan, well, grandma, there goes our dream. Let's wait, darling. Try the last 16 bars again for me, and maybe we can speed it up a bit. Hi, Chuckle. Hi, Barbara. I'm a little busy right now, honey. <laughs> mm hmm. Yes, sir. Boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. I kind of like that. Don't you think it brings out my eyes? Oh, yeah. Well, it kind of brings mine out enough, I'll tell you that. <laughs> is this the young lady you were telling me about, Chuck? Oh, uh, yeah. Barbara, uh, this is Mr. Bradley. I know. Hello, Mr. Bradley. How are you, Barbara? Uh, you look very, uh... Well, for want of a better word, 
Phew. Oh, uh, uh, Dan, she sings up a storm. Well, not only that, Mr. Bradley, I can act a little and dance a little. I do impersonations. Oh, that's, that's fine. That's oh, just... Mr. Bradley, I can do anything. Uh, besides that, I guess I'm just about the most stage-struck girl in the world. And that's always good for ambition. Yes. yes. Uh, I've taken lessons from everyone, honest. A uh, uh, drama. Uh, look, Hold on. Look, uh, Ophelia. The queen says, let her come in. Then Ophelia enters. I'm Ophelia. Uh... Where is the beauteous majesty of Denmark? Then the queen says, How now, Ophelia? Then Ophelia says, How should I your true love know? Yes, that's, uh, that, that's fine. That's, uh, but wait! You know, you haven't heard me sing. No, but I have a feeling I'm going to. Can this be love, love, love? Can this be real? Is this the magic all lovers feel? Is this the thrill of true enchantment? The thing they call the oldest story ever told. No trumpets blow. It's just the deep inside I really know. And so my heart alone can answer. Can this be love, love, love? Oh, yes, it's love. Well, that's fine, honey. I enjoy it every minute. But I'm, I'm awfully busy right now. If you'll if you run along, why, I'll give you an audition sometime. <laughs> Brother, you've already had one. Yes, yes, that I have. Have you any more surprises for me this evening, Chuck? Uh, no, that was uh, it for right now. Boyd? Oh, Harry. Yeah. Everything set backstage? Yeah, we're okay. Feed the people and we'll draw the curtain. Good luck, boy. Thank you. Bless us all. Amen to that. Uh, the reservation's coming. Pretty good, Danny boy. Barbara, wait till Mother gets a load of you in that outfit. Oh, it's nothing, really. That's what I mean. Uh, I'll, uh, have you know I just auditioned for Mr. Dan Bradley. You did what? Auditioned. A-U-D-tioned. Well, what did you audition for? I want to get someplace. I'm tired of just being Margaret Walton's little sister. Well, why don't you go out and get yourself a millionaire? And that outfit you can't miss. I don't need a millionaire. Honey, every girl does. Not me. If you can be as our soak. Why, James, those other things you'll send to the stage door, won't you? It's most important. Uh, Daniel. Daniel. Oh, I ordered some flowers for the company, my boy. Oh, nice. Yes, a, a dozen long-stemmed American beauties for each of the ladies. You know, opening night, you know. Well, it's almost curtain time. Yes, oh, my dear. It reminds me of the good old days. With de you know, I was quite a stage door Johnny in my day. <laughs> you still are. <laughs> my boy, I want to thank you for making this night possible. Me? Money, Mr. Gale. Oh, no, no, no. You know what the French say. Faire son dire. Act without talking. That's what I like to think I do. Everybody, on stage. Excuse me, where can I find Mr. Gaylord? He's right over there, sir. Thank you. Look at them come in. It's going to be a wonderful audience. Father? Oh, no. Wendell, you should not have come here. Uh, Mr. Bradley, uh, this is my son, Wendell. How do you do? And, and his wife, um... Oh, dear. Uh, it's Priscilla, Father. Of course, of course. Priscilla, Mr. Bradley. <laughs> Mr. Bradley, if you please, sir. You see, we've been looking for Father for months, and now he has to go back with us. Back? <laughs> back where? To the rest home. Oh, we call it that. It's sort of an uh, institution. An institution. Oh, yes, but nothing with bars on the windows or anything like that, no. Oh, well, that's better. Well, um, what do you think of my latest enterprise? Very nice, Father. Yes, isn't it? I'm afraid this may come as sort of a blow to you, but Father has delusions. Uh, delusions of grandeur. Oh, now, wait a minute. I... What? Oh, 
it's usually quite harmless. You see, he still believes himself living in the past when he was very wealthy. Imagines himself as a famous impresario. He's done this quite often. But the, the money, this, this place, the show, he, he signed all the bills. <laughs> yes, he's usually very clever when he starts out on one of these. You see, he has a small annuity and he saves up for a year or so. Then he leaves the rest home and finds someone who needs an investor. He uses his own money for his clothes and the best hotels and then he just signs things. Somehow, people always give Father credit. Shall we be going now, Father? Going? Me going with you now? Oh, that's ridiculous. You must stay here and see my new show. His show? But who's going to pay for all this? Well, we would, but we don't have any money. No? No money? No, no money. I have a small, modest income. I'm sorry if there have been any inconveniences. Inco oh. Oh, convenience. Okay, everybody. Stand by for your call. Oh, it's your any time now. Well, I'm ready, Harry. Ruth, look! Behind your costume. <laughs> there. That's better. Well, what was wrong with it? Nothing, except you had it on backwards. Backwards? Uh, I thought that was a Parisian touch. She'd have been the head of the show. <laughs> Come along, Father. We must go. Yes, of course, my dear. I, I will. I just want... Daniel, um, I want you to know that... Uh, that... Hear that, my boy? That's what I did it for. The magic moment of the theater, just before the show starts, and the stage comes alive with a wonderful imagery. It's a thrill that I've never forgotten since I was a little boy. I tried to help you create it. Maybe I did. All right, now wait a minute. You're going to stay and see the show. And you're with him. He's going to stay and, and see it and enjoy it. Enjoy the magic that he helped to create. Jim! Mr. Gaylord Stable. Yes, sir. <clears throat> Come here. Hey, Danny boy. Get a load of the tuxedo. Just went and hocked for this beauty. Look at that doll. <laughs> well, it doesn't matter. We'll be loaded tomorrow. Just loaded. Hey, look at it. Hey. Huh? Hey, what's the matter? Oh. What's well, Gaylord? Old money bags? Old money bags is as nutty as a fruitcake. How can a guy be nutty with all that dough? He hasn't got enough dough to bake a loaf of bread. Yeah, but he, he signed for all those bills. I know, and I'm his partner. All those bills he signed for, I'm responsible for. Send me to prison. Oh, well, I, I'm not worried. I, I've seen you in jams before. You... Oh, that's a great comfort. Whole place packed with people waiting to see. Wait a minute, we are packed with people. If we were a hit tonight, we might have reservations for for weeks and months ahead. Yeah, yeah that's right. That's money, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. The money to pay off the cast. Uh, yeah. Could be. And, uh... Well, the musicians, the costumers, and, uh... And, the uh, scenic designer. Yeah, and, uh... <laughs> and? And Dan, the tux. Uh, sure, Chuck was the tux. Yeah, we'll pay for that, too. <laughs> okay, all right. We're not rich, Chuck. No, we're not. Here we go. Wait for me, Dan. Yeah, it's a nice looking hat. Maybe it'll fit me. Oh, I don't think so. <laughs> I'd have to have my head reblocked. Give it to the hat check girl who belongs to Gaylor. Hey, the joint's really jumping. Danny, you really started something. There's a man that started it. Yeah, he's jumping too. Yeah. And Bradley proudly presents a new Parisian review. Voici Paris. Featuring the sportsman, Kathy Charlton. 
Frank Duvall and his orchestra, the Moulin Rouge dancer, Frank Parker in a special guest appearance, and starring Margaret Walter. Have you ever been to Paris? Have you visited Montmartre? Have you seen the Eiffel Tower? It's in every Frenchman's heart. Have you ever strolled the Champs Elysees or the Rue de la Paix after dark? Have you ever been to visit the Bal or the Place de Bigal for a lark? Have you ever been to Paris? Have you visited Versailles? Have you seen the naughty twinkle? It's in every Frenchman's eye. If you've never seen the Arc de Triomphe, that is something I just can't forgive. If you've never been to Paris, then you've never really lived. Have you seen the naughty twinkle? It's in every Frenchman's eye. If you've never seen the Arc de Triomphe, that is something I just can't forgive. Just wondering, uh, would it make any difference if, uh, if the show was a flop tonight? Well, you could always get Mr. Gaylord to back in another one. Gaylord, yeah. Well, supposing I lost Gaylord, everything. I'd like that fly. And then you can be a plaster or a bricklayer. Thank you. 
never been to Paris, if you've never been to Paris, then you just never really live. Breathe out. Jack Benny Show, you've all come to know our unusual musical greeting. As you may have heard, we don't say a word. We go, hmm, and this hmm takes a beating. This hum that we sing can fit anything ridiculous or sublime. We didn't invent it. Was presented at the very beginning of time. When the world was unfurled, then the only man was Adam. He was born, so the Lord sent him Eve to be his madam. She stood there clothed in sunlight, didn't even wear a bib. And when Adam asked her, How'd you come? she answered, From your rib. Adam stared, yes, he stared and went, Hmm. He went, Hmm. He stared, and the longer he kept looking, while ideas began a cooking, he went hmm as the facts of life were bad. Paradise was quite nice, and without a word of warning, I'm afraid Adam strayed and did not return till morning. He said that he was hunting, Evie thought he told her fibs. She waited till he fell asleep and counted all his ribs. She took out of his ribs and went, hmm. She went, hmm, and not in vain. When she found her rib was missing, Evie wondered, who's he kissing? She went, hmm. Started raising Cain. Samson fell for that bell. Sweet Delilah was a 
this girly, she was mad, cause he had longer hair and it was curly. The night she flipped his dresses, she fed him this baloney. I did it so the world would know just which one had the Tony's. Jackson thought, yes he thought, and went, hmm. He went, hmm, for quite a while. It was really an unfair cut when she gave him such a haircut. He went, hmm, and the crew cut came in style. Let me see, Anthony loved his Cleopatra madly. He was true to that shrew, but she treated Mark quite badly. One night, Cleopatra held poor Mark within her grasp. And while he sat there kissing her, she stung him with her ass. Poor Mark jumped, yes, he jumped and went, hmm. He went, hmm, and other things. He said, Pat, I should desert you. Cleo asked him, does it hurt you? He said, hmm, confidentially. It stings. Comes the day for our pay. Mr. Benny starts to heckle. Mr. Hyde jumps inside. He turns into Dr. Shekel. The salary that he pays us keeps the sportsman not so sporty. He's laying all that hay away until the day he's 40. We look down at our checks and say, hmm. We say, hmm. Oh, this is fame. Should we sing for our enjoyment or collect our unemployment? We say, hmm, we'd be making just the same. So from Adam to Benny, we bet our last penny. The whole world loves to like this, don't you, Jim? I certainly do, sir. Dan Bradley proudly presents the singing star of the Moulin Rouge, Margaret Walton. I'm all aglow again, I know again it's love. I feel that thrill again, that chill again of love. I didn't want this thing to happen, but it happened just like that. Not a single thing can be done about it Wild again, a child again in love I guess I'll try again, I'll fly again with love If this is what they call a rebound I'll sound off and say that I'm a glow again A glow again, hooray! Wild again, child again in love I guess I'll try again Glow again, a glow again, hooray! See what I mean? Kids, everything is all come along fine. Oh, you you're watch beautiful, Lord, you're, you're beautiful. All right, kids. Harry, it looks like in spite of everything we're ahead. Don't, 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 don't say that. I... I'm superstitious. Oh, what's the matter with you? Can't you hear the audience? We are a hit. No, no, no. It's an old stage tradition not to mention the word hit on opening night. You... So many things could happen. You old timers and all your traditions. What's the matter with you? Don't whistle in the dressing room. Don't read mail during a performance. But crying out loud, an understudy yeah. always yeah, yeah, makes yeah. good news. I know. Party. It's so all 2,000 years old. Keep up the morale. I'm going to talk to you. Wait a minute. I'll help you. Is it all right, Harry, if I'm just a little bit happy? Just so you don't overdo it, huh? And now, Joey Harper and his guitar. Kid. Kid, you're all doing great. I want you to stay in your dressing rooms and rest. What does he think we're going to do, calisthenic? Watch yourselves on the next number that's coming up. It's tricky. I'll leave music cues. Uh, wait a minute, the boss wants to say a few words. Thanks, everybody, for being so wonderful. You ought to hear what they're saying out front. Nothing but raves. If you can keep it up, I'll, I'll love you forever. Oh, thanks, honey. Hey, how pretty you look. Thank wow. you. Wow. Honey, I believe we got a hit. Oh, Danny, I'm so happy for you. For me. For us, darling. Hey, Danny, what about Margaret? Margaret? Honey, it's you I want. How many times do I have to tell you? Mm. Oh, darling, wait after mm. the show. Don't, Danny. Don't. 
And after tonight, I can open spots in Las Vegas, Broadway. And then spaceship to the moon. And then you'd uh, you better run along and check your scenery, honey. What? You better do what the boss says, honey. Go get your little hammer. Margaret, you worked great. What a performance. Not as good as yours. Anything wrong? No, nothing special. Just let me fix this mic of yours. Well, I, uh, I guess that's what you call making your life an open book, huh? Well, for you, I'm not running a lending library. Well, now, look, Miss Walton, you miss You stay out of this. Wait a minute. I wish I could. Listen here, now, you got me into this show, making me think you were in love with me. Margaret, don't And then you fell in love with that, uh, that lady mechanic here. I think I will get that hammer. Margaret, I didn't lead you on. You led yourself on. You, you believed what you wanted to believe. Oh, so that's how it is. Well, I leave you with two words. Goodbye. You can do this show without me. But we can't do the second half without you. Ah, I'm crying. Well, Margaret, you can't do this to Danny. I can't, can I? Listen here, Danny. You can take this turkey of yours and put it in your deep freeze. Hey, what's going on? What's the matter? She just walked out. We, we haven't got a second act. Oh, no. Oh, yes. Hey, with Margaret out of that number, we're dead. Yeah, I guess we are. Too late to re-routine it, and no wonder, study. What did I tell you about superstition? Well, I guess I goofed. You still have Gaylord and his millions. Gaylord hasn't got any millions. What? He's as daffy as a dyke mender. Oh, Dan. Thought maybe I could keep it from you till after the show tonight, but his son and daughter just came in to take him back to the Jolly House. This whole place is on the cuff, and I'm responsible for the tab. It's what's commonly known as fraud. It's like the Bastille for me. Oh, you poor darling. The Moulin Rouge dancer in the Bois de Boulogne Palais. Well, at least I got four more minutes of solid show, and then... What are you going to do, Dan? Ruth, I've had a lot of trouble in my life, and most of it never happened. I'll tell you one thing I'm not going to do. It's worry. <laughs> Why don't 
don't you go on. You mean out there, in front of all those people? Naturally, like you did in Paris when I produced the musical. You, you were fine. I, I, that was different. You tricked me then. You're just I'm... a little trick, Chuck. Jan, Margaret's number's next. What do we do? How do we do? How do I know what we do? To stall them or something, Harry? Okay, I hope you know what you're doing. I know what I'm doing. Margaret, I just heard you quit the show. You know, I still think I'm going to tell Mother about this outfit you're wearing. Margaret, you can't do a thing like that. All the girls, the actors, everybody, they're all depending on you. You can't do it. The show must go on. Why must the show go on? Well, because. Because every... Because I'll tell Mom on you. Honey, I don't know why you're making all this fuss. You've always wanted to go on my place? Well, here's your chance, little Eva. All right. I will. No, I don't care. See, I will go on. I shall not fail the call of Thespis. You better be good or I'll tell Mother about that, too. Of course I'll be good. I've been waiting all my life for this. I love the theater. I'm dedicated. Dedicated? You're a dead kid. Oh, Jane, the audience seems a trifle restless, and I want you to send a bottle of champagne to each table with my compliments. Each table, sir? Well, of course. At Paul Roger and a good year. Certainly, sir. Yes. What have you been doing now, brother? Well, just ordering a drink. A drink for everybody in the house. Oh, father, no. Wendell, you depress me. Go on, do something, do anything. A little joke like at the party the other night, huh? Dan, you know I'd do anything in the world. Well, then go do it. I can't. Uh, Jack, will you please help me? Oh, yes, I'd be glad to. I, uh, I'll, I'll help you think of something in a minute. Honest, I will, Dan. Wait, let me get you around here, right? Your little light. Right, let I'm me stuck. Get... Yes, yeah, so is everybody, honey. I don't want to wrestle. Well, these things are hard to handle. Well, take it easy. I'd rather lose the dress than my life. Revolve. Gentlemen, I <laughs> didn't expect I'd uh, be here tonight. Uh, well, on stage, that is, but uh, I, I guess I could tell you a story about these two English fellows who walk into a bar in New York City. They walk up to the bartender. The bartender looks at them and he says, uh, What do you have, gents? One English fellow looked at his friend and he said, uh, what did he say? <laughs> He's going over great. And what? So the, uh, Gonna wind up with the circus number? The we all set up for the other number. Says, uh, we'll have to strike that first. Story. A kind of a riddle that's been kicking around the states here. So, Mr. Bradley, I'm ready. Good. Ready for what? We're going for Margaret. You? For sure. I know the number, all the moves, everything. Well, yes, but... But what? Well, you're so, uh, so inexperienced, I mean... Oh, wow, wow, wow. Well, uh... Yes? No. We can't get the circus number ready in time. Danny, we're dead. Barbara, you're on. Use your sister's dressing room and hurry. It's not your sister, and it's not your brother, yet it's the child of your father and your mother. Uh, I, I don't believe I know, old man. Who is it? It's a bartender I met in America last week. <laughs> Who is it? Penny, can I come in? Huh? Come on, snap into it, honey. Chuck's running out of material. And the costume doesn't fit? Ah, oh, it looks fine. They'll never notice it from outside. Are you sure? Positive. I'm so nervous. And my stomach. It happens to everybody. Just butterflies. Blood butterflies. <laughs> they are power diving. 
Come on, you got to get a hold of yourself, Barbara. I know. All my life I've been dreaming of this chance. Sure you have. I, I got to go on. And you're going to do fine. If it kills me. It won't hurt a bit. Uh, oh, there they go. Well, pull up on the throttle. Uh -huh. I guess I'd better be getting off stage right now, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to tell you one thing that my mother always told me. She always said, Chuck me, boy, wherever you go, whatever you do, always be certain of one thing. When the people are nice to you, kind and considerate, don't forget to leave the people with a laugh. Always leave the people with a laugh. So, ladies and gentlemen, until I see you all again... <laughs> Curtain, we gotta go on. Please hold it. Hey, 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 you can't, honey, because they all. Oh, there's a condom all wrong. It doesn't look. fit. Bring it with you, honey. Oh. Hey, look, Uncle, don't worry. The understudy always makes good for the star. That's tradition, girl. Come on, baby. There's one kid that may break tradition. Yeah. Margaret, you still here? Thought you'd be back with Swanson's minstrels by now. Suppose you know your sister Barbara's going to take your place in the show tonight. Is this on the level? <laughs> How would you know? Something must have happened. I hope nothing's gone wrong. It is quite a way, isn't it? Go ahead, Baba. Watch me get you. Don't worry, Mr. Bradley. I I'm over the jitters now. I'll go out and kill him. Sure you will, baby. Go do it. Down these kids all thrown out of work? No. Listen, baby, you can't. I can't. Say something, will you? You're the stage manager. All right? Do it. No. Come on. Well, do you still think it's so easy? More temperamental talent, huh? Do you still think that the show must go on? Not with me. Well, I do, darling. Here. Now, give me this. This is going to be the first time in show business the star has to make good for the understudy. All right, Margaret. Okay, kid, come on, let's break it up. I'm a lonely girl And I'm looking for a lonely guy Just to kind of make the hours go by in this lonely town. There must be someone looking for a gal like me who could use some love and sympathy when the sun goes down.
sympathy when the sun goes down then we could leave this lonely The number was written for me, so I suppose I might as well stay here and do it. <laughs> You're okay in my book, baby. Me too. Okay. Guess what? Chuck and I are going to get up an act together. We'll be great, fairly great. She'll need me there to drag her on stage. <laughs> Come here a minute. Aren't you over this year? Barbara, i got to tell you something. You'd have been wonderful tonight up there. Honestly, you would have. But you just got first night nerves, and I know someday you're going to be a great big star. I promise. Oh. <laughs> See you later. A circus. Here they come. Here they come. Big circus day today. Hooray! I love a circus, a circus, a circus. I love a circus. It's a circus right for me. Show me the monkeys, the lions, the tigers. Show me the tumblers and the clowns I love to see. Here they come, here they come. Hear the boom of the drum. It's the great, great, greatest show on earth.
Presenting in ring one, Tony Gentry and Baby Burma. In ring two, Lady Margaret and her chimps. And in the center ring, Bill Dietrich and his pony. Where'd father go? What do you mean, me? We are. We're partners, aren't we? Oh, now, please. Let's forget that partnership arrangement because business bores me. I wouldn't think of it. Tell me something. Where do you want your checks? Oh, checks, money, they never catch up with me. I'm leaving for St. Louis tonight, right away. St. Louis? Yes. Oh, you could do a big favor for me. Would you tell my son that I've gone to Alaska? Alaska? Please. <laughs> Tell me, what's in St. Louis? Oh, oh, there's a fascinating proposition there that I'm interested in financing. It's an old-fashioned Mississippi steamboat. You know, a chance for something with quality and splendor. Oh. Well, we're going to miss you. <laughs> Thank you. Au revoir, mes amis. Goodbye. Thank you for a very delightful visit. Hey, what's all this boy stuff here? we still got a finale to do. Well, Carrie, we got a head on our hands, haven't we? Uh, don't count your chickens before they hatch. <laughs>